Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a post hoc residuals test for a Pearson chi-square test of independence. So this is uh, one of a uh, few different options that Sharpie mentions in his article. There are a few other ones. This one focuses actually on each cell. So after Pearson chi-square test you know that there is an association, if it was significant, between two nominal variables. And then with this postdoc test, you're actually going to look for each cell if the expected count is significantly different from the observed count. I will leave a link to this Jupyter notebook in the description below, so you can read this uh, on your own or you can pause the video. Or you can visit my website and find the same information there. How this test uh, works or can be done, I'll be showing by an example and for that I'll need some example data So, and then I'm going to load as a pandas data frame. So I'm going to import pandas. If you've never used uh, pandas before, you need to use pip install pandas first and then you can load pandas in. Then to actually load the file, it's a CSV file as you can see, so I'm going to use read CSV and the head will show me the first five options. I get a small warning because it's a big file but it's not so relevant for this example. As the example I'll be using the two nominal fields uh, marital one, uh, mar one which is the marital status and the uh, gender, the sex field and I'm going to store those as my field one and my field two just so that I don't have to retype that every time. To get a quick impression of the data, I can use pandas cross tab and just enter those two fields. And then I get a nice little cross table. And I can see that, for example, 50 people said female and separated. Now, to perform that postdoc test, I will need the results of the chi square test itself. I have a longer video about how to do that exactly, but uh, in essence, I'm using side by stats actually to get the results. I store all of them and this will give me a whole bunch of things including the chi-square value, the significance, the degrees of freedom and the expected counts. Now I haven't found any, so that's these. I haven't found any package that actually performs this postdoc analysis. So if you do know of one, let me know in the comments below. So how this actually works, I have to go over the formula. So it's going to be a little bit longer than usual. I need to adjust residuals and this is the scary looking formula. Now in here the OIJ is simply the observed count in cell IJ. Uh, EIJ is the expected count. R uh, I is the row total of row I and C J is the row uh, sorry the column total of column J. And N is simply the complete total. So I actually have already those observed counts, those are in my cross table. And uh, I have the expected counts that came out of here, out of these, so those are these actually. So what I don't have yet are the column totals, so I can simply uh, use that by summing up my cross table. And let's also have the number of columns as uh, len column totals. And that will give me the number of columns I have, which is 2, and my column totals, which are 1068 and 873. Then for the rows, I can do the same thing, but then I have to add that I want it from a different axis, otherwise it's going to do the column totals again. So this gives me the number of rows, which is 5, and the row totals, which are these. It might also be good to have the entire total, so I can either sum up the row totals or the column totals, and it gives me the grand total of 1941. We have everything now we need to fill out this big formula, and it's simply filling it out. There is no square root to my knowledge in basic Python, so I'll simply, uh, unless you're using the math library, but um, you can simply raise something to the power of a half, and it's the same as actually a square root. So I'm going over all my cells, so uh, all rows, uh, all columns, and then simply uh, do exactly what the formula said. I'm taking the observed counts, those are in the cross table. I subtract the expected count, divide by, and this is all between parentheses because I'm taking the square root out of it, so raised to the power of a half, the expected count times one minus the row total divided by n times one minus the 
column total divided by n. And then I have all the adjusted residuals, so that's all of them. It might be good to actually keep track of which one of these belong to which cell. So I'm going to do the exact same thing again here, but now I'm going to actually create a data frame myself, where I have the marital status, the gender or sex, and the uh, adjusted residual. So it's simply going to append that every time uh, it calculates one. So that way, now in my uh, results, I nicely see which one belong to which one. The nice thing is that these are adjusted residuals and they're actually so-called z-values. And z-values can be transformed into, they form a normal distribution and we can actually therefore calculate the probabilities of these. So to do that I'll use SciPy, uh, SciPy stats and the norm distribution that they actually have. And then I can use, uh, what I'll doing is actually 1 minus the cumulative distribution of the absolute value. So that will give me the left side. Um, this will be everything uh, lower than this set value. And because I'm making it the absolute value, it will always be more than 50%. So that gives me then one minus gives me less than 50%. But because I wanted two sided testing, I'll multiply it by two. Whew, that's a lot, but it's pretty straightforward in here. I'll add those as significances and there we go. However, we're doing multiple testing here, so I need to adjust for that. So one way to do that is the so-called Bonferroni correction, which is actually simply multiplying the original p-values by the number of tests that we've done. So in this case, we're doing 10 tests. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another column, adjusted signif uh, significance to my nice little table of the uh, postdoc results and um, that's going to be the length so i can get that by the shape uh, and then the first one which is the number of rows and then multiply that uh, the results of the the significance so it's simply going to multiply these with the number of rows so if we do that everything nicely gets multiplied by 10. As you can see, that means that some of those significances will then be bigger than one, which is theoretically impossible. So it's better to actually have somewhat of an if, that if it multiplies and becomes bigger than, um, than one, that it actually uh, replaces it with simply one. I can do that also with hindsight. So what I'm doing here is uh, I'm selecting all of them where it's bigger than one and I'm going to then simply replace it with one and that gives me my updated and final results like this. And that nicely shows then uh, that in this case only these two were significantly different. So the female and male widowed had a significant different amount than originally expected. So, and that's I think uh, all there was to it. I hope this video was helpful. Um, if it was perhaps a little bit too quickly, you can always pause the video or check out my website where you can read a little bit more about it. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching.